Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another Glee Reaction. This episode, we are diving into season number four, episode number four, called The Breakup. I'm assuming it's either going to deal with Kurt and Blaine, since I think they're still technically together, or if not, it's going to deal with Rachel and Finn, which I don't think that they're even together either because of the whole, you know, him going off to the army and her going to New York. But nonetheless, somebody's breaking up with someone. You know, Brody and, and Rachel shared a kiss. That's a, a pretty big deal. So I'm not sure if we even deal with any of the kids from high school. I'm sure we are because it's still Glee after all. But nonetheless, the storylines that are happening in New York are pretty pretty enticing, if you will. I'm very I'm I'm eager to see what this episode takes us. Uh, I've been kind of critical of the season so far, so hopefully this is a, a episode that definitely you know, gets us back on the right track, at least gets me back in the right mindset and uh, optimistic throughout the season. You know what time it is, though, guys. Buckle your seatbelts. Let's ride. In a sense, every day was just like Valentine's Day. We're still young. Shouldn't we still be experiencing those things? Mm, so maybe it is playing with Kurt. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, this place is awesome. Yeah. Not the, uh, ideal neighborhood, but what? Not the ideal neighborhood. Eighteen hundred. I can't do this, Finn. I don't understand. I don't know what's going. I mean, I left with so much. Ooh, we got Naya in this one. Nice. I was gonna redeem my dad and make you proud. I couldn't face you seeing me. I'd be forced to come home every few weeks, and then I'd get to see you. Damn, she can go a few weeks without washing are you okay yeah sorry i was up late last night reading Destin. crap can you hold on one second is bill wright's office how can i help you um it's there's just me. no time oh my god i'm so sorry uh, look i've taken over isbel's phones for the week and they just won't stop ringing it's, it's there's okay. no time for blame call me back later, we uh, i can't down. isbel says we have to get the calm on the website by midnight tonight break okay, okay. okay. i love you Damn, dude. Yeah, these long distance things don't really work. Okay. She's amazing. Even when she's not all dolled up. I've never seen her so alive. She's found the moral. About to bust out into a song. I know what you're doing. I see it all too clear. I ran away. It's tough, man. Very tough situation. I'm glad that Finn doesn't feel comfortable. In New York. I didn't even bring a suit. Finn, you can't wear dad jeans and a rugby shirt to callbacks. What, what's callbacks? This amazing bar that all the Niata students go to, and Friday nights are the best because everybody gets it. Mm. <gasps> oh, okay, he came. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. I know, I just couldn't wait any longer. I, I, I miss you too much. Oh, I miss you too. I'm so good to see you. Wait, I can't believe you're here. Hi. I missed you so much. Hey. <laughs> Finn, what, what are you doing here? I'm not really sure at the moment, but you guys, good to fantastic. See you. We're all together here, just like the good old days. Yeah, but I feel like these relationships are ending pretty soon. You okay? You seem a little. <laughs> I'm, I'm great. It, it was just a, it was a rough flight, I had to admit. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. I love you. Something seems so freaking off, man. I mean, obviously she kissed him, but. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. It's my off off Broadway debut. It's all good. I got you back. Yeah. 
I mean, I know, ah, uh, this is tough. This is really freaking tough. Sweeney Todd Mega Medley. Risk a page six spread? I don't think so. Vogue.com enter and sing. Teenage dream tonight. Let you put your hands on me in my skin tight jeans. Be your teenage dream tonight. Hey, you make me. Oh, my God. This is chills. Oh man, dude, that was amazing. Holy crap, what does this mean though? So, you and your friends sounded great together. I wish you'd have gotten up there and sang with me. Yeah, I just I don't fit in here. What you're thinking, and I don't need your reasons. Don't tell me How awkward must it be to be laying next to her right now? Oh, they're all laying next to each other. Oh, so awkward. He has seemed out of place being here. Just run away. Dude, you totally spooked me. I thought I was the only one awake. Been waiting for somebody to come out. I was hoping it'd be fine. You got no. Not ready for Finn to be away. It is my duty as soldier of the Lord to invite you to McKinley's newest and most important club, the Left Behind Club. Kitty thinks the end of time. Kick off his sandals, dance a little bit, judge the crap out of everybody. Hi, I have a question. That's a very interesting way to go rapture? about it. When the end times come, the true believers in Christ will be lifted up body and soul into heaven, leaving everyone. I can find these Japanese ladies. Pretty screwed up. Hello? I'm not gonna lie. I wanna go. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty screwed up. We've been left behind. We've been left behind. We've been left behind! That's what it feels like to be left behind, Dottie Katsutori. Kitty! This has gone way too far. Okay, Dottie seems. Why did we go damaged. with it then? I think I'm gonna go. It was really fucked no. up. Wait. Please don't go. I just really. <laughs> Man, I didn't realize how much I miss Finn. Ben really does add a lot to the show. Girls like it, people like my mom like it. It's about high school and You know I love me some grease. Being true to yourself. Plus Give Sandra. me some grease. The wisdom of Solomon. That would be wonderful. No, like for like for a few months. I want you to be there with me. That's a big thing, man. That's huge. What about my job? Now I'm somewhere doing nothing while you're off fulfilling your dreams. Uh, I don't blame her for that at all, Schuster. I don't. I don't think what I'm asking is so crazy. I thought you'd uh, be So you thought I'd just pop the champagne, follow you around like an obedient little puppy? Don't like what I have to say. This went really sour really fast, and I think it was Schuster's approach to it all. Sophomore year, it's just, to oh my god, it's and secretly so watch weird. I counted the number of times you smile at me and I die on days that you didn't. This sounds a lot like a breakup to me. You know this isn't working. Dude, all three of the relationships. You know I will always love you the most. Done for. We're done. You did that this. moved well, really freaking fast. Because I will tell you one more thing. Obama's gonna lose. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You didn't have to do that. Her character really Actually, sucks. I think I did. Hey, do you want to go through sheet music for Greece? I was thinking. I feel like I have a lot to discuss already at the end of this episode. Interesting, interesting things. What the heck is she doing here? What the heck is life? This is where you proposed to me. When you did, you reminded me it was where we had our first date. <laughs> also where we first met. Oh, my God. Do you remember that? I should have known you would have just been here, though. Why would you think that I he know, was here? Kind of weird, but I just Why? Like he was here. I don't care if it's your Jerusalem. Why would you think he was here? Before, so. Yeah, I would have just, you know, come here first. 
If you would have picked up your phone. What am I gonna do with my life? I don't have my girl. I don't have a job. I don't have a place in this world. Finn, you just walked out on your girl in New York. What do you mean? And that's better than anyone else on the planet as far as I'm concerned. Damn, dude. <laughs> every couple. Every couple on stage right now. Damn, dude, don't do this to me right now. Not right now. Hmm. Stage all by himself. That's an image right there. That is an image. All right, well, there you have it. Season four, episode number four, the four for four <laughs> episode. By far the best, the best episode we've had this season. It's not even up for debate as far as, you know, my opinion goes. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a great episode. I don't know why I'm stuttering on purpose there. What a great episode, though, man. It was a great episode, but there's so much uh, scrutiny. That's how you say it. There's so many things that I have to nag about again. So many things I have to nag about. I'm going to praise it. I think the music was excellent. It makes me realize that I, for one, really love depressing music, breakup songs, if you will, because a lot of these breakup songs we're familiar. We're very uh, close to home. And so that's why I think music wise, it was excellent. A very excellent choice of music. But, but there are complaints to be had as well, man, unfortunately. So I thought the first half of the episode couldn't have been done better. Very 10, if you will, esque kind of episode where, you know, the return of Finn and, and Finn feeling uncomfortable being in in New York, feeling like he doesn't belong, feeling as though, you know, he's happy with, you know, what Rachel's doing on her own, what Rachel is accomplishing, if you will, like how comfortable she feels being in New York and how she belongs there, like all of that stuff, excellent. All of the Blaine stuff where he's feeling as though Kurt has no time for him, where he feels as though Kurt you know, is is fulfilling his dreams and that Blaine should move on and, and, and go the route that he needs to go. Love that all. That was all perfect. I mean, I was a little upset with Blaine for, you know, cheating and going the route that he went. But nonetheless, it all, beginning episode-wise, was great. It made me realize how much I had missed the the way things used to be, I guess you can say, when it comes to the show. But that halfway point also made me realize that they should have let go, that they should have let go, that, that we should have had a spinoff show following, you know, Rachel, Kurt, Santana, Puck, Finn. Like, there should have been a spinoff. If, if, we, if we really sit here and think about it, the show should have continued with, you know, the underclassmen from the last season and then with the new the new cast members. And then Schuster and Emma, of course, being teachers there and, and Sue and stuff. That's all a part of the school. So, yes, they should have still been a part of what Glee is. But I think that we as fans should have got a spinoff to really focus on, on the, I would have called it, after Glee or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a writer. I'm not somebody that can come up with cool things. But I think for sure Glee, Glee to a lot of us first three seasons are who, it, who, who we view them as. Glee to us is Rachel. Glee to us is Kurt. Glee to us is Finn, Santana, you know, Puck. That's, you know, even Chang and, and, and just everyone that left, like, that's who we view Glee as. And that'll never be taken away from us. So I feel like as fans, we should have been given a, a side, a, a spinoff, a Life After Glee. That would have been another cool title for a show. Because what we're doing by holding on to them is we're not allowing us to, to enjoy or fully enjoy the characters that they're trying to introduce us to. And because of that, I feel like it's starting to hinder those characters for me. 
I'm starting not so much to dread them being on the screen because that's not the right word. I do enjoy them. I do. I do enjoy the characters. I, I still don't agree with the whole, you know, Jake being Puck's brother. Eh, whatever. Kitty being so similar to what Quinn was kind of, but being a little more on the malicious side of it. I really don't care for her character. And then Marley, of course you feel for Marley. You know, she's the, she's a girl that her mother gets picked on for, for working at the school, but also being heavy set. But not only that, like you feel for her as well, because she comes from like a poor, not so wealthy family. So it's tough because I'm trying to care for the storylines and I'm trying to ignore some of the things that are just blatantly not legit or realistic at all. So Santana coming back to do her laundry, legitimate reason. She heard rumors about you know doing laundry over there, so she has a reason to come back and see Brittany. Love it. Makes sense. The way that 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 Finn, you know, got out of the army. Love it. Makes sense. Him going to see her in New York. Love it. Makes sense. Everyone falling back to high school. Zero sense. Zero sense. The ability for them to just waltz through the hallways and and be a part of so many of the I guess you can say activities, if you will. Baloney. It's baloney. There's no freaking way. No way. I want you right now. And I know that you guys are probably going to be like, dude, stop taking it so serious. But to me, it's like I care about the show so much. I want them to, to, to stick to the realistic route. So to me, it's like if you graduate, I want you to go back. Get back on campus. Have that awkward conversation with whoever's in charge and say, hey, I graduated from here X years ago, X amount of years ago. I want to waltz the hallways and I want to go talk to all my old teachers. It just doesn't happen as easily as it seems like it happens here. It's just odd. It's weird. It doesn't make sense to me. It bothers me that much because of how odd and weird it is. The fact that Rachel, again, these moments need to be had. I agree 100%. These moments need to be had. But don't have them on school grounds. That's what bothers me. It doesn't make any sense to me that these moments are being had on school grounds. Meet me at breadsticks for, 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 ah, you know what I mean? Meet me at breadsticks. I know she said that she went to Finn's house. She went, or at least to Finn's parents' house. She went to, you know, the, the shop. He wasn't there. But for her to be like, I figured you'd be here. <laughs> what? So there's things that like, again, I really enjoy the show. And, and the, the episode was by far my favorite episode. And I know I'm bashing a lot of things again. And I, I, I told myself that I wouldn't. But I'm just passionate about this. And I feel like when you're passionate about something, you tend to critique the little things. And so I think I have every right to critique these little things. They, they just bother me. They're not realistic to me. I thought everything in the first half of the episode was great. I thought music was great. The second half is where it started to teeter for me. And I still think that this episode's a nine. And I know that's crazy with how much, you know, down talking I'm doing right now. Because I just feel like, ah, it was done perfect. And even the way they did it at the end when they were singing the song and it was showing like all the moments of the couples, you know, when they first met and when they first shared, you know, special moments together or whatever the case may be. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Everything about the episode was great. But then we got to that halfway point where it was like, all right, we're done with New York. Finn left. And then instantly we're thrown into Kitty. And to be honest, she has done nothing to be slightly even liked. Like, as a character or anything. I look at her. I think of Quinn. I think of the fact that she is just a meaner version of Quinn. She's more entitled than Quinn. It's like Sue said when we met, you know, Kitty. She is a bitchier version of Quinn. Okay, cool. You went that route. You gave us the exact same character, just bitchier. But then we're supposed to just kind of 
be cool. Like, what was the so Marley? This is where it gets an, uh, weird to me. Is Marley is supposed to be this girl that we care for, this girl that you know we feel for, and she's really into Jake, but Jake stayed in Kitty, right? But Jake in, invited her to come to this thing for whatever reason. She's there now. Marley's there. Their idea was to basically scare the shit out of one of the girls that are at the class with them or at this little seminar, whatever you want to call this thing. But you would, again, I feel like the person that Marley is, she would have never bailed, even if she likes Jake. She would have never bailed. She would have never let this girl feel the way they made her feel as far as a prank goes. So like this whole scene to me was kind of pointless. It was kind of weird. It didn't make any sense. It kind of, it made Marley look bad. Why would Marley bail? Why would she be okay with making that, that girl feel bad, making that girl scared that she was left behind? You know what I mean? So like that to me was like a what moment that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, Santana joining in on the high school fun. Another weird thing, I know she's there for Britney, but again, I feel like as a college student, wouldn't you just rather pull Britney to the side and hang out with her? So there's moments that just to me just doesn't, they don't make sense. And okay, Finn came back to see Schuster. I'm not saying that doesn't make sense because that, that stuff happens all the time. Of course, you went off to college or in his case, went off to the army. You went back to somebody that you, you're seeking guidance. You're seeking uh you know, a conversation to somebody that you looked up to or whatever the case may be. And so, like, this conversation makes sense. Didn't hate it at all. Then Finn shows up, and he's at Glee. Okay, a little odd, a little awkward, but whatever. Schuster told him to to, to come along, to, to sit in with the classroom. I'm glad he didn't sit with, within the seats, and he sat off to the side. That makes sense. See all his, his old friends. Cool. I'm okay with it. Uh, we continue forward. His approach here, Schuster's approach, was terrible. I understand what he was trying to say. Hey, come with me. You know, spend time with me. I don't want to be away from you, whatever the case may be. But then he started getting upset with her for not wanting to to leave work. I would have just presented the opportunity, told her, hey, you know, why don't you come with? Once she would have said, you know what, I want you to chase your dreams, but I'll still be here type of thing. You're engaged for fuck's sake, Schuster. Like, she wants to be with you. Just because she decides that she doesn't want to go to Washington with you because that's you pursuing your dream and that she's just going to be sitting around. Why the hell did you get so freaking offended by that? So I don't know. I it, it, Again, it's realistic, the conversation being had. I just think that Schuster's expectations weren't very realistic. Um, we kind of skip forward and I know I'm going through scenes and I don't usually do this. This was a really cool moment too. another moment that needed to be had, but I don't know why we had to have it in school. What did Santana do? Did she go to, to the, to the front office and say, Hey, look, I need to sing to my girlfriend and I need to use the glee room. It doesn't like, like when I start to think that way, I start to think that like, that's just not realistic at all, but it was still a powerful moment. Again, I'm just trying to like ignore where they are because the moment itself needed to be had. And it was a really cool moment. Um, a, a, a powerful moment, a very emotional moment, but then we get here and then we're supposed to feel for the, like, it's like you keep bringing back old characters that make me go, oh, I miss you. I want you back. And then you throw us the characters that you want us to now follow. And it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not working. I feel like you either need to snip it in the, like you need to snip it and you should have did a spinoff and let us follow them because we, we deserve to follow them and know the stories that they have outside of school. And then you continue this glee show through the new characters that's how it should have been done, in my honest opinion. In my honest opinion, it should have been done that way. Because now it's to the point where I'm like, these new characters, they're all over the place. And I know that our old characters were all over the place, but th those were the only characters we had. So we were, again, forced to, to go with the flow. Like, all right, this is how it is. But now that we have the old characters, you're bringing them with us. You're bringing them back. 
and then we're, we're we're forced to kind of be okay with like the all over the place stuff that's going on. Ah, it's a great episode. And like I said, I gave it a nine because it really has been the best episode season four by far. It's not even close. And man, I've been talking for like 15 minutes already. But when it comes to certain things, I'm just like they need to let go. They should let go. Come on, like, does the idea of a spinoff sound that bad to some of you? Because I think this, the idea of a spinoff where we follow Rachel, we follow everyone that graduated, would have gave the fans exactly what we wanted. And we would have still had, you know, this show to fall back on with new characters. Uh, but that's the episode, man. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're not too upset with me for for being the way I've been this season. Uh, I just, I'm trying to trying to figure out where we're going with this i'm trying to figure out what's the expectation for us man like what are we what what are you trying to accomplish with us here because i feel like it's like trying to move on and date someone else but then having your ex be around in your life it's exactly how this feels but that's the episode hopefully like i said you enjoyed the review hopefully you enjoyed the reaction don't forget to like comment subscribe Head on over to Patreon for the full, uncut, unedited reactions over there. Episodes extra early over there as well. With that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.